Tony, uh, after Tech cut the lead to four, your guys answered with a 12-0 run that started with Malcolm's three-pointer on that inbounds play. Is that the kind of response you've come to expect from these guys? Well, we needed to do that. Um, Virginia Tech battled hard and did a good job. And you know, as you can see, even when we played them there, um, you know, they have four guys, sometimes five, that can all put it on the floor. And they stretch you out, and you're playing against guards. So there's some tough matchups in there. They hit some tough shots. A couple of those shots that Smith hit, you had to live with. Then a couple times he got separation. But no, we were going to need to make some outside shots or get some buckets on the glass. And uh, I thought we responded in the second half with our defensive tenacity and soundness for the most part, and then made some big baskets and um, you know got it a little more how we needed it. But it always comes down to guys stepping up, making a big shot, getting a big stop, a few blocks. I thought Isaiah gave us a nice lift defensively because of their mobility. Um, that's why I went with him, and I needed to give Anthony a rest. Mask after halftime. Yeah, he, um, he he practiced yesterday. Uh, he did um, the day before yesterday. He exerted himself, went through the proper procedures, and responded. So then he said, "Okay, the day before, let him practice and do about half or two thirds of the reps. Um, let's see how he responds after practice. See how he responds this morning." And he was fine. And then um, and then at halftime, he decided to take off his mask. I think he might. <laughs> When he, there was a play at the end of the first half down in the corner where he was diving on the ball and there's a jump ball and I think he might have rebroke his nose so I think he just said screw it I'm gonna go without the mask and um, and uh, he banged a few threes I think you know it's such a delicate thing um, and those of us who've played have obviously have broken nose but it was tough of him to respond like that and just uh, step up out there and play and and uh, we needed everything he had for sure. Mike Tony, they haven't been a great rebounding team and they were. Pretty competitive on, on the boards with you guys. Yeah, How much yeah. of an emphasis was that at halftime? Well, I mean, I they got nine offensive rebounds. Yeah, a few times. And when they shoot, uh, they shot 19 threes. Um, we shot 13. There's going to be some long rebounds, um, but they did get a few. Um, yeah, we always try to get on the glass against them. We felt like if they're going to play that small, then we got to try to capitalize on it. And I think we got a couple key offensive rebounds. Probably didn't hurt them as much as I thought we would, but. The fact that we knocked down a shot, Evan hitting his big shot, London, those, you know, we needed that because they condense and jam the lane or pack the lane so much. You can just see that and that it's, you can go inside some and try to make some plays, but you got to hit some outside shots. And then um, sometimes our best offense against the zone was just throw it up there and go get the offensive rebound. But, um, you know, I thought, again, Darian was pretty active on it. And Anthony's always active there. And, um, you know, Mike didn't play much, but he got a couple offensive rebounds. Tony, uh, you guys have reached so many milestones the past two seasons, and I know you don't put a lot of stock into numbers, but can you just comment on uh, being 27-1, you matching the school's all-time greatest start, and, and just what it means to you to be where you are right now? Um, thankful, for sure. Um, I read a quote to our guys after the game in the locker room. It's a John Wooden quote, and I thought it captured this group as well as anybody. And it just says, a guy sent it to me, um, a couple of days ago, he sent me an email and he said this was something when I was coming up as a coach, Coach Larson, he said that really uh, kind of my philosophy was about this. And he, he sent it to me and I, when I read it, I said, that is these guys. And it's the quote that says, it's amazing what can be accomplished when no one cares who gets the credit. And if that doesn't embody these guys in terms of their ability to, to play for each other, to be unselfish, um, to do the dirty work, and then to see what they've accomplished, um, not sitting here saying, how oh, we're done, but we had our sights on trying to trying to at least be good in the conference season and see if we could do it again. And, and we at least got a piece of that. We've got a couple more games to try to get something out right. So um, uh, very thankful because these guys have um, just bought in, played their guts out. And it's a, as they say, it, it's, um, it's a contribution of everybody from Coach Curtis, our strength coach, to Ethan Saliba with all the injuries, those little things going on, and the players, we call them the green machine, the scout team, you know, all the staff. And that's, it's pretty special. Did I expect it? Probably not. Um, am I very thankful? Absolutely. And, and to be a part of it at an institution like this is what I had hoped for. And um, I'm glad at least that we're, we're in this part of our goals in this conference season. We've, we've stepped to it. We weren't afraid to go get it. Tony, you mentioned the collective unselfishness of, of this team. Darian on senior night is, yeah. a, is a young man who waited his turn. Yeah. And then tonight, 
I mean, he, he had contributions, yeah. I mean, two assists, two steals, blocks, seven for 11 from the floor. Just your impressions of his senior season, but in particular tonight. Very good tonight. I don't know if he should have gotten the T. I guess he pulled up on the rim. I was, I probably lost my cool a little bit on that one. I just didn't want that moment to be taken away. But his mobility um, and becoming even effective with his offensive um, touch and some moves is significant. And then he's he's really uh, embraced that defensive stopper to blow up ball screens, block shots, bother. And I just thought he he makes you. He causes a little bit of an issue for the opposing team if they're going to put him in a lot of ball screens because he just makes people go back out to half court and then that lets our defense reset. And uh, he's really, like I said, he's, he's bought in. And I, I'm, I'm so proud of him because you're right. His story is a real good story. Just like Mike Scott's was just like, I go by, I talk about Mustafa and Jerome Mienzi, but Darion to, to wait his turn. And then look at this. I mean, you know, I'm not saying he didn't want to play more and couldn't have played more early on, but to experience what he's gotten to experience in this last year, I think he'd say, you can ask him, um, some of the hardship was worth it to be in this spot. And um, obviously, there's more to go, but that, that means a lot for me. That's what you coach. A lot of the reasons you coach for are to see those stories happen. <clears throat> With the injuries, um, have you seen Anthony sort of rise to the challenge of played well. and you know he was really good for you guys in the first half tonight yeah you know again we talk about those advantages maybe we didn't dominate on the glass the way we wanted but we when we could go inside to him we were struggling they got out 11 to 4 or whatever the score was and we you know we were probably settling a little bit for the outside stuff and they were condensing it but we just tried to find a way to go to him and he got us back into the game and um you know i, I just think because that was our advantage. They had some advantages with their size. We had some with ours. And I thought Anthony did a good job of really catching it and kind of waiting and then being assertive. And he's really played well um, and stepped up his game you know, offensively. And, and he did a good job defensively, too. I thought he was pretty good because a lot of times they had a guard. He was guarding Ahmed Hill and um, different guys, which are, again, our perimeter guys. So I like I liked that side of it, too. Can you give us a Justin Anderson update? And did you have any idea that you would win every game since he's been hurt and how will this team change when he comes back well they responded um you know and then the game without London um that that was that was great I mean I just to see how the guys have how Evan Nolte has stepped up Devin Hall the last couple games Marielle not as much this game other guys stepping up that's what it takes and my hope is that it's building depth as far as an update he's you know it's I don't really have one except he's progressing and um how will it change when he comes back you know we'll have more depth and um you know we'll um will hopefully, like I said, be better and be sounder and you know have a, another weapon, of course. But um, but I like the resiliency, and we've talked about that all year. We've needed that. Different guys, different times.